Urshifu was already a strong option back upon release when the Isle of Armor DLC first dropped. Around that time though, Togekiss was still widely regarded as the best Pokemon in the format, so Urshifu's success was limited. However, with the current format being such an unfavorable place with Togekiss, Urshifu's full potential can now be seen. It's been a dominating force within the Series 7 metagame, but just how strong is Urshifu, the One Punch Bear? What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who haven't been following me for a few years, ever since 2018 I've had a running series of competitive analysis video essays covering the most prominent Pokemon in the current VGC format. I've decided to revive the series now that I have a bit more time and intend to keep it going every week. So if you guys want to see a particular Pokemon covered, be sure to comment it down below. I also used to showcase fan art for the Pokemon from the previous week in the following episode, so if you're an artist who wants to see their art featured, click the link in the description to join my Discord and submit your Urshifu art for next week's video. These videos are really time consuming to make, but they're honestly my favorite project, so if you guys want to support me, be sure to leave a like on this video and share it with a friend. It means a lot to me. If you want to support the channel even further, there's a link to my Patreon page in the description down below. You could also tune into my live streams on Twitch. I go live Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. But of course, the best support is going to be to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. This video is about Urshifu Single Strike in particular. If I ever covered Urshifu Rapid Strike, it would definitely require its own video considering how differently these two forms function, and especially after Wolf Glick's recent Players Cup 2 win. That is a whole different bear. Let's start off with an overview of Urshifu Single Strike, the one I thought was objectively better until literally earlier this week. This bear is a dark and fighting type Pokemon with 100 HP, 130 attack, 100 defense, 63 special attack, 60 defense, and 97 speed. These stats are pretty great considering a solid amount of relevant Pokemon in the format can hardly break 90 base speed. If this format was any faster, Urshifu's relevance would definitely come into question. Now the stats overall seem really good, but there's two things that make Urshifu as great as it is. One of them is its signature move Wicked Blow, an 80 base power physical dark type move exclusive to Urshifu Single Strike. Those of you who aren't familiar with it might be thinking, oh yeah, like Crunch or Throw Chop. <laughs> no, not like Crunch or Throw Chop. This move crits, like every time. So it's just as strong as Close Combat without the defense dropping drawback. In fact, comparing this move to Close Combat is probably selling it a little short. Critting every single time means that the counterplate of this move is limited. Set up an Iron Defense? Urshifu doesn't care. Intimidated the Urshifu? He literally didn't notice. Did you set up a Reflect? Burned Urshifu? Well, okay, yeah, that one actually works, but he's got 130 base attack, so it's still gonna hurt quite a bit. Point is, this move is really good, and the only drawback is the fact that it has a maximum of 8 PP. So if that's only the first thing that makes Urshifu really good, what's the other thing? Yeah, Urshifu's ability is kinda gross. Ignoring Protect will definitely need to be reworked in the future when Dynamax doesn't exist. Not breaking through Max Guard and the fact that the target would have double HP is pretty much the only thing that would keep this thing from being completely broken. Togekiss, we miss you. Please come back. Oh, oh, those guys? No, 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 don't worry about them. They're not even good anymore, trust me. Okay, now that I'm done hyping up the literal most used Pokemon in the format, let's talk about the downsides of Urshifu. Dark fighting leaves Urshifu very weak to fairies, especially considering most fairies are special attackers, and this guy's 100 HP isn't offsetting his special defense by very much, believe me. He's also really weak to fighting and flying type moves. Being weak to flying moves is actually pretty huge when you consider that if something's capable of max air streaming, it's probably gonna do it. Looking at you, Cart, you beautiful fortune teller. I love you. And like I said, this thing's speed tier is pretty good, but it's still gonna be outsped by a ton of notable Pokemon in the format. But let's talk about counters later. So, how are people making use of this Pokemon right now? When something is as strong and reliable as Urshifu, there isn't much thought that needs to go into how to train it. Urshifu is a decently fast, powerful physical attacker, but it needs to either be able to live a hit from Pokemon it can't outspeed, or somehow knock them out despite being slower. Let's not try to reinvent the wheel here. I've got two sets for you. The first set is Jolly Urshifu with max attack, 4 special defense, and max speed. His item is a Focus Sash, and the moves are Wicked Blow, Sucker Punch, Detect, and Close Combat. Yeah, it took all two of my brain cells to figure out how to train this thing. This is the most common Urshifu set at the moment. Wicked Blow allows Urshifu to break through tons of walls within the format, hitting them through screens, defense boosts, intimidates, whatever. There are very few Pokemon that can actually survive one or two hits from this thing. Unfortunately, one of those Pokemon is Dusclops. Who made you? 
Who said this was okay? 57%? Are you kidding? Sucker Punch is great for hitting faster Pokemon in the format with a strong priority stab move. It's also great for picking off threats like Dragapult or Regieleki, who could otherwise threaten a KO on Urshifu. Detect is just Diet Protect, but it's also less likely to get in prison, so you're gonna want to run that. And Close Combat is how you fail to one-shot Incinera to lose the match. The next set is Choice Banded Urshifu. Literally the same set as Sash Urshifu, but angrier and gets to KO Tapu Fini on occasion. Oh, and it also fixes that little issue we had with Dust Cops on the previous set. 12% of the time. Who made you? So what does Urshifu do on teams? Well, it's meant to be a major wall breaker and oppressive physical attacker. It deals well with things like Metagross, Glacier, Stack Attacka, Dragapult, and Didi. The list goes on. Ignoring the Intimidate on lead with Wicked Blow makes this guy really powerful. His main squeeze beyond that seems to be denying Trick Room. Not by taunting the Trick Room setter, because that's an option actually, but like, deleting them. Yeah, Stack Attack is really bulky, but Choice Band Close Combat wipes him out like he was made of Play-Doh. Yeah, Urshifu isn't very complex, actually. If Shrek was an onion, Urshifu would be like a grain of rice, but with muscles. What's gonna work? Teamwork. So what partners allow Urshifu to shine the brightest? Well, this thing fits on a ton of team compositions, which is why it's sitting at nearly 40% usage in the format, but it's most famous for a team comp known as Nut. This stands for Nihiligo, Urshifu, Thunderous. Nihiligo being a fast and powerful rock poison type allows it to check the various flying and fairy type Pokemon that threaten Urshifu. On top of that, it's one of the most specially bulky Pokemon we've seen in the format, which covers Urshifu even better considering its abysmal special bulk. Thunderous finishes out this trio by being able to benefit from Intimidates meant for Urshifu with its ability Defiant, which raises his attack by two stages when any stack gets lowered. He's also able to switch in on ground moves meant for Nihiligo while also being able to threaten KOs on water types within the format. Name a more iconic trio, you can't. Other notable partners include Rillaboom who can threaten KOs on Tapu Fini, while Urshifu threatens a KO on Incineroar to cover Rillaboom's back. And even Tapu Fini itself is a phenomenal partner for Urshifu. This is mainly because of Misty Train, which prevents Urshifu from being statused. This is especially great for stopping burns, which, like I said earlier, is one of the few ways to lower damage coming out from Wicked Blow. So, how can you beat Urshifu? Well, there are plenty of counters that are viable at the moment. Of course, Urshifu's number one counter is Tapu Fini, a Pokemon that can easily switch in on it and one-shot it with a fairy move. Not much to say beyond that. Tapu Fini is a decently strong and defensive fairy type that can handle Urshifu pretty easily, granted Tapu Fini hasn't been damaged too much prior. Whimsicon is another fairy who can outspeed and one-shot Urshifu, but you're more likely to run Tornadus at the moment, which doesn't appreciate Sucker Punch nearly as much. There really aren't many other fairies that are relevant in the format who can deal with Urshifu though. Most of its counters surprisingly aren't fairy types. However, if you're willing to run Tapu Koko over Regieleki like I have on a few teams, it will significantly improve your Urshifu matchup, as it doesn't mind taking a Sucker Punch and is still a very fast fairy within the format. Galarian Moltres is another major issue for Urshifu players. While Choice Bandit Close Combat can deal a ton of damage to it, it's more than likely it's going to get sent into Berserk range and start sweeping your team with Max Airstream. Zapdos and Thunderous are other great options as Zapdos recently got access to Hurricane, and they're both powerful Dynamax options which are capable of outspeeding and one-shotting Urshifu with Max Airstream. There are of course more Pokemon capable of dealing with Urshifu, but these are the most relevant options. Keep in mind that the best way to deal with Urshifu given its frailty and tendency to lock itself into moves is smart board positioning and proper prioritization, which isn't something I can teach in this video. So, Urshifu is clearly one of the most powerful Pokemon in the format. It's capable of one-shotting many threats and dealing significant damage to everything regardless of if they attempt to block the damage. It's got clear strengths and weaknesses which can be identified by even novice players, but at high level play it can be taken extremely far. That's why it's seen so much usage within the format. But I want to know what you all think about Urshifu Single Strike. Do you think it's good, bad, or even broken? Let me know in the comment section down below along with what Pokemon you want me to cover next week. Do me a favor, leave a like in the video if you enjoyed, it helps me out so much more than you know. And this video did take a lot of time to make, so if you want to throw me a few bucks on Patreon, I'd really appreciate it. All links to my social media and Discord server are in the description down below. Have a nice one, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!